For a limited time, we're giving away this Canon EOS RP. All you gotta do is go to videomaker.com slash win and you can enter there to win this camera. The Canon EOS RP, enter today at videomaker.com slash win. Hello everyone and welcome to a special episode of the Video Maker Podcast. My name is Haley LaPlante and I'm the managing editor here at Video Maker and also the managing editor for our second website, Creator Handbook. So for those of you who might not be familiar with Creator Handbook, uh, it's a website that's dedicated to content creation. So we focus on things related to YouTube, to Twitch, even to TikTok and things like that. So um, today's video is actually an interview for Creator Handbook. And today I interview Julie Nolke. And Julie is an actor, a writer, and a comedian who runs a self-titled YouTube channel. And she uploads weekly sketches to her channel. Um, she has about over 800,000 subscribers at this point in time, and she's really seen a lot of growth in the past year. So she's doing really great. Um, so we're really excited to get the chance to talk with her and see where she's at, where she's going, and things like that. So um, without further ado, let's get into the chat with Julie. All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's Creator Handbook interview. Today, we have Julie Nolke here with us. She is a YouTuber based in Canada, and she does comedy on her channel. So today, she's going to walk us through um, kind of how she got started on YouTube and her creative processes and things like that. So thank you so much for being on with us, Julie. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Of course. We're happy to talk to you. Um, so I guess for those of our listeners who may not be familiar with you or your channel, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of life before YouTube? Yeah, sure. So I, I mean, I have a YouTube channel called Julie Nolke and I specialize in weekly sketch comedy content. Um, I've been doing YouTube for about six years now, but only recently has it started to pick up. Uh, so I had a video go viral last year in April mm -hmm. and that seemed to be what caused the avalanche of, um, you know, views and subscribers and things really took off from one video. But before that, mm -hmm. um, so I'm originally from a city called Calgary, which is right near Banff in Canada. And, um, there's not a huge art scene there. And I always knew I wanted to be an artist. So I moved to Toronto uh, to go to post-secondary as an actor. And I have my university degree in acting. And then when I graduated, uh, I assumed that I was going to be famous or I was going to book <laughs> acting jobs right away or writing jobs right away. And nothing, and I still, now I can't book a thing to save my life. And so I started originally a blog and then that turned into a YouTube channel kind of while I was waiting for these gatekeepers to tell me that I was good enough to be in this industry. And so for me, the YouTube channel originally served as a place to practice, uh, practice different characters, practice being in front of the camera. And, uh, and then I also wanted it to live as a portfolio so that maybe if casting agents saw it, they might be like, Oh, she's actually got acting chops. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a risk on her. So that was the whole purpose of the YouTube channel. And now it's gone an entirely different direction. Right. Yeah. We find that a lot that YouTube is like a really great platform as a portfolio for people to like kick off and um, get seen. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I guess what got you into like the comedy part? So you went to school for acting. What got you interested in doing comedy specifically? Um, that's, I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I, I guess I must, I must be a funny person. Um, I, you know, I, I did a lot of improv in school, in high school, like a lot of sketch comedy and improv. Right. And my parents are really funny. I think it was just a really easy way to let off some steam and create something. And also, you know, come to think of it, YouTube is not necessarily the place for drama at all. Right. Um, yeah. like short sized pieces of drama don't really work on YouTube. So maybe, you know, my skills in comedy kind of worked in tandem with the platform, uh, uh, being better for comedy as well. Right. But I love it. It is, it is my bread and butter. Absolutely. Nice. Um, let's see, what's our next question. Okay. So I guess you kind of touched on this, that you started YouTube because you wanted to get your work seen and you weren't really finding any luck um, otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
did you have a goal in mind then when you started? Like, I'm going to get seen by starting this channel. Yeah, the the original goal of the YouTube channel was really just practice. Because um, when I say I wasn't working as an actor, like I I, I wasn't working. I, I booked maybe some commercials and some theater stuff. Um, and then, but then I couldn't afford acting classes right. and I was working two jobs at the time. And so I was like, man, I need to practice because the onus falls on me to be ready for my big break or like that, you know, that big role that comes along. I want to be good enough for it. So the original, uh, initiative behind the YouTube channel was just to practice. And then that slowly migrated its way into, oh, wow, the sketch is kind of good yeah um maybe i'm going to sharpen my writing and then maybe i'm going to use this like maybe i could send this to agents or maybe i could build up like a repertoire and and then and then people will see this and go oh yeah she she could play all those different characters so it kind of evolved over the years but it definitely started as a place to just get in front of the camera and sharpen my tools so that i could be ready for the traditional film and tv industry right and so um, has YouTube gotten you any work then since that? Yeah, yeah, it really has. Surprisingly, um, there was a job that I booked, um, thankfully, as a result of one of my sketches. It got seen. I actually have also had friends that have um, done sketches with me on the channel that casting directors have found them on IMDb and emailed them and, and offered them jobs. Nice. So it's amazing. Canada is a little bit more behind in terms of acknowledging um, online talent as being as valid as, you know, a traditional um, film and TV star. Right. Uh, the U S is quite a bit more ahead. And um, you see that with, you know, the Liza Koshies and the Lily Saints right. and they're yeah. really mm -hmm. able to, pave their way um in that industry it's a little bit more behind here but i do think it's starting to get traction this it's just the beginning right yeah getting the ball rolling up there mm -hmm. <laughs> um so looking at your channel it looks like your style maybe shifted a little bit from like your earlier videos to now so do you want to like walk me through kind of how your style has changed and what your process was kind of going through that for sure yeah so I think when I started, I, I didn't really have a voice. I think I was just trying to stab in the dark and see what worked. So in terms of my own writing, um, well, first off, I got better over time. That's the main way of how things change. Yeah. Um, I got better as an actor. I got better as a writer, a sketch comedy writer, a character writer. Um, but more importantly, I think there was like a really pivotal change where I was able to develop my voice. And I realized that what I really wanted to do was make content that was from a female perspective, but wasn't ex uh, specifically for females. So I wanted to be able to talk about life from from the lens of being a millennial female, but have it resonate with a with a wider audience. And I think every time I go into a new sketch, that's kind of at the back of my mind of, oh, how do how do I speak from my genuine voice um, and have it you know, relate to a larger community. And that's the hope. Right. Yeah. I think looking at some of your videos, I think you definitely achieve that and relatability with like wide audience. Um, you mentioned the video that went viral. Was that the uh, quarantine? Was that the one yeah, about the quarantine? The, the video that went viral was the uh, talking to my past self um, where I explained the pandemic right, yeah. to the January 2020 version of myself. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, you did what? Four of those, right? I did. I did do four of them. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who are listening, definitely go check that little four series out because it's pretty funny. Um, all right. So I guess my next question, what, what point did your channel start to grow? Do you feel like it was that point that really kicked off? Or do you feel like there was an earlier point where you started to get a little bit more attention? Well, I was able to, when I first started the YouTube channel, I was able to get it to about 50,000 subscribers, which is quite significant mm -hmm. still in my books. Um, and then it really stagnated. And part of that was, I haven't mentioned this before, but when I first started the YouTube channel, there was a comedy, a sketch comedy element to every one of my videos and then a cooking element because okay. I was really passionate about cooking. 
And, um, and while it was very niche, it was also like, I was like, oh, this is fun and different. And, you know, there'll be an entertainment portion and then a cooking portion. Right. Um, and that worked for me to a point. I, it turns out I wasn't that passionate about cooking. And I eventually, you know, reached the fork in the road where I had to realize like, this isn't getting me to where I want to go. I'm getting all these opportunities to be a cooking host when in actuality, I, I really want to be an actor and writer. So I had to stop um, doing the cooking videos. And when that happened, I was at 50,000 subscribers and I had a total stop on growth altogether. And I stayed at 50,000 for probably a full year um, with no growth, but during that year um, and virtually no views as well. But during that year, I, you know, was kind of creating these sketches in a vacuum because the algorithm was, was totally penalizing my channel. Yeah. So nobody was seeing anything, but it also gave me the freedom to fail. And so I was able to develop all these sketches and get quite good at them um, in a quick period of time because you're making them weekly. Right. And then so, you know, cut to a year later, I have a video that pops off and um, and that's really, sorry, to answer your question, that's really when I did start to grow was when that video went viral. But the reason that it continued to grow is that I had this entire library of content behind that video that nobody had seen. And so people latched onto that one video and then they saw, you know, there were videos there that had less than a thousand views that now have hundreds of thousands. And it just, it's just because they were undiscovered. And so I had this like avalanche of growth, um, and had people stick around, which I think, um, made the whole thing that much sweeter. You know, people were finally seeing my videos. Right. Well, that's like not what I thought because when I was looking at your channel, looking <laughs> at your older videos, I do see like hundreds of thousands of views on these videos. And I'm like, man, she's been doing like really great for a while. Cause what you've had your channel for like six years, you said about six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of those were like five or four years old. And I was like, man, she was still getting a lot of views for a long time, but that's not the case. No, it's wow. the opposite. I had it, people went backwards to watch stuff. So like this time last year, no word of a lie. Most of my videos had under a thousand views. Wow. That must be pretty yeah. like a good feeling though, to know that people enjoyed that video so much that they go back and look at your old content and then you get that many views on older content. It's really surreal. It's yeah. uh, way back when, you know, a year ago I was happy and I was fine with making content that no one was seeing because I had this mission of, well, I'm getting better. It, you know, I had all these goals in mind. So it was okay that I was making content in a vacuum. But in my heart, of course you want people to see it. Right. You're working so hard. You're developing these characters. You're telling these stories and you just want to be able to share them. So it was really surreal and like a wonderful dream come true to have people go back and watch my old stuff um, and enjoy it because I really did think it was good and I wanted to share it with people, but just there was nobody watching it. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so then putting all this work into your videos, like, can you tell me about that creative process, you know, like from mm -hmm. getting an idea for um, a bit and then writing it and translating that into video, like how that process usually goes for you? For sure. Yeah. So uh, the probably the most difficult part and the part I spent the most time on is coming up with the idea. Um, because you always, you want to come up with, you know, the seed of your idea and then you want to have a perspective on it. So, you know, if I go back to, um, the talking to myself past self videos, there's the seed of the idea, which is, oh my gosh, we're in a pandemic and this is such a ridiculous scenario. And then there's the perspective of, okay, well, maybe, maybe I'm talking to my past self or, um, maybe I go back in time or maybe there's something futuristic about it. Um, and so that I usually sit on, you know, it can be upward of weeks. I'll have notes written down on my phone or just I'll, I'll jot down little things in my notebook that I might want to come back to as I kind of develop and think more about what's the angle I'm going to come at this thing with. Um, but once I have the idea and I'm like, oh, that's, you know what, light that's bulb it. moment, that's what it's going to end up being. Uh, it usually takes me about 45 minutes to oh, write wow. it up. Yeah. Um, as an actor, you learn to memorize really quickly. So I can usually memorize a six page script in about 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Uh, and I memorize <laughs> both parts. I mean, nice. it's also easier because I write it. Right. And um, yeah. And then I'll get so my husband uh, films them with me. OK. Um, his background is in filmmaking and he's traditionally a director, but he's wonderful enough to step behind the camera and become the oh, videographer perfect. for me for my sketches. Nice. 
Yeah, it's it's a dream team. Yeah. And so we'll film. We've gotten really, really efficient over the years because, of course, in order to have longevity on YouTube, you have to be able to make things fast and efficient. Otherwise, you're never going right. to consistently do it. Yeah. And then I and then I edit. And only recently did I actually in the last month or two, did I start hiring an editor to help me just to ease some of the time. But up until that point, I've been doing all the editing myself. Nice. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like you and your husband pretty much behind the whole thing. Yeah, it's just the two of us. Well, he's only there to help for the shoot days. Okay. So the rest of it falls on me. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, well, yeah, my next question was working with a team, um, but you edit your videos. You said you recently hired an editor. Do you feel like that's made your workload easier having a an editor? Yeah, I was really hesitant to give up the edit. And I think par- part of that is because as the writer, creator, act, whatever it is, right you're so you're so invested in it and you know exactly how you want the final product to look and feel and so to give up the edit is kind of like giving up the cherry on top it's like the final yeah um way that the video comes together but um i i had a kind of a humbling moment when i did uh start working this with this editor because i realized that I am not the best editor. You know, <laughs> yeah. there are there are people out there that are significantly better than me. And if I can surround myself by really talented people who are really good at what they do, um, then I can get the best possible product. And that's what I found with um, using this editor. He's a friend of ours and has been a friend for years, extremely talented. And sure enough, he's better than me. And so <laughs> yeah. I, I now I'm at the point where I can happily give up the you know, the micromanaging and just let him do his thing because he's good. Yeah. I mean, I get it. That's like your baby, right? And you have this vision mm-hmm. to hand it to someone else is like scary because you want them to achieve the same vision that you have. But it's great that you found someone that can do that for you. Totally. Yeah. Um, so is YouTube a full-time gig for you then at this point? Like, and if so, when did that happen for you? Uh, it is. Nice. Um it actually happened a long time ago. I, so I don't call myself a YouTuber necessarily. I, I'm in my mind. I'm, I'm just a creator. Yeah. So even that sounds pretentious of me saying, but so I've always had different pillars of income. And so I haven't had a Joe job in probably four years. I quit my last kind of office job mm-hmm. uh, because I was able to diversify my income in such a way that I could live fully off my art. So um, you know, there's the booking, acting and, uh, TV movie stuff. Mm-hmm. There's the, um, I work as a host for a lot of different companies. There's the YouTube side, there's, you know, branded stuff. And so more recently when stuff went viral, it's really just those pillars changed and how mm-hmm. much weight is in each one changed. Right. And so, um, I would say I've, I've been living solely off of being an artist for several years, but this year, definitely more of the weight has fallen onto the YouTube pillar just because yeah. it's, it's just gotten bigger, but I'm still actively doing those things as much as one can in a pandemic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great that you can do all that during a pandemic still. Cause you know, a lot of people aren't as fortunate. So oh, tell me about it. I know this last year, I was gonna say this year, but it's 2021 now, hopefully things get better. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, we've been, it's, we've been really, really lucky and I do not take it for granted. Yeah. Maybe it was that pandemic video. It's just like, that's what people needed to see like a comedic twist on something that's been a little bit of a dark hanging cloud in like everyone's lives. So. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. No, I thought they were great. Um, let's see. So I've seen that you do some collabs with other, I don't know if it's um, creators, it seemed like, are they friends or other creators? And I did see the one with uh, Peter McKinnon on his channel, that popped up on my feed and I thought that one was really funny. So I guess, how do you go about doing collaborations? What do you look for when you're collabing with other people? Oh man, I'm so new to all this that I'm not even sure. (laughs) It's more than anything, um, just people I really wanna work with or people I have admired for years. Peter McKinnon is someone that I have looked up to for years and years and years. He's yeah. a fellow Canadian. Right. Um, and I just, and I just love his content. And funnily enough, you know, 
it was him that messaged me saying, oh, yeah. love your work so much. Would love to work with you. Oh, that's and great. I was like, what, what is this life? You're like even? mind blown. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. So starstruck. Yeah. We had to get on a Google meet like this. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is insane. <laughs> like this is, I, I, I could die right now. This is so, I can't believe this is actually happening. Um, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not selective in terms of like, oh, I want this to be a really successful collab. I want to get all the followers more than anything. It's, I really just want to meet this person. I've looked up to them. I love their content so much and just think it'd be cool to hang right. out, maybe try and make a video. We'll see what happens. Yeah. That is an awesome way to go about it. I feel like sometimes when people have collabs in mind, it is more of like, I want to reach their audience or focusing on like the numbers and that part of it. So doing it just to yeah. work with other creatives and get some inspiration. And yeah, that's awesome. I do think that that's the benefit to not being a massive YouTube channel right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, cause I've spent so many years as a small YouTube channel that no part of me is working for the numbers, you know, cause I, I've proved to proven to myself that I can make videos and continue to make videos without anybody watching. So you know, I, I don't really have any skin in the game in terms of chasing the views dragon. It's just more about, well, what do I want to make? And if people like it, they like it. And if not, who cares? I'll go back to only a thousand views per video and just be just as happy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, the dedication. I admire the fact that you grinded and stayed grinding despite not getting any views. And it obviously paid off very well for you. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, so now that you've kind of kicked off in this last year and really started to see a lot of growth and views in your channel, like what are your goals and aspirations moving forward with your channel? Do you have anything this year that you want to accomplish? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, my goals are to continue to make content that I like. Um, I would love to make bigger content for the YouTube channel if I could. Um, that will obviously be pandemic dependent. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just want to maintain. I enjoy it so much. There's no reason to stop. I have so many ideas. And now that people are watching, there, it's almost like there's a revived inspiration for YouTube, you know, because I've been doing it so long. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel burnt out. I feel really energized and excited to continue to create. So just want to make more stuff. I want to do lots more collabs because I enjoy them so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then outside of YouTube, it's going to be, you know, trying to write in more writing rooms and get more acting jobs and just, just see what comes my way. Nice. Um, and I guess we're kind of coming to the end of this here. So the last question that I have for you is... Do you have any advice for aspiring creators on YouTube and maybe even more specifically, um, maybe people who are interested in doing comedy on YouTube? Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, it's a really saturated market right now. And well, and kind of always has been, whether it's comedy or anything on YouTube, it's extremely saturated. And while that seems discouraging, um, I think if anything, it should be a reminder for creators to, um, come at their content with a perspective because you're the only one who can bring your original voice to the type of content you want to make. And so if we're talking about comedy content, like, yeah, there's a ton of comedy content online, but there's not your style. There's not your voice, your face, your, you know, pizzazz, whatever you can add to it. And so, if I was going to give anybody advice, I would say, if you're going to make a YouTube channel channel, if you're going to make a YouTube channel, come at it with perspective, with a unique perspective and just stay true to that as much as you can. Right. That's some great advice. Yeah. It's, it, I feel like with this last year, everyone has so much more time on their hands. And I feel like a lot of people have been taking a crack at that YouTube, like, Oh, I'm finally going to start that YouTube channel. Um, so I'm sure the already saturated market is just, you know, even more, even more so. Um, but I yeah. feel like that shouldn't discourage people from putting their stuff out there. So not at all. I don't think so. And I think there's, I mean, if you wanted to be super, if you wanted to be super formulaic, you could probably 
you know, follow certain steps and, you know, as people do with Instagram and whatnot, you could probably make your way to some level of fame. But I think you're going to find more enjoyment out of making stuff if it's strictly the stuff that you like making, right. you know, that has your own spin on it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's all the questions that I have for you today, Julie. Uh, thank you so much for talking with me and answering all these questions. And um, I really hope that our listeners found this um, inspirational and uh, useful. So yeah. Awesome. Thanks again. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. All right, everybody. Um, we'll catch you next time. Thank you. All right. That concludes today's interview with Julie. Um, be sure to head over to her YouTube channel if you want to check out her videos. I'll leave that link down below, as well as a link to her Instagram if you guys want to check her out there. Um, if you enjoyed this special episode of the podcast today, be sure to head over to iTunes and give us a five-star review and let us know what you liked about it. Um, we would love some feedback on this, and this is something we might do more in the future. So let us know. And once again, this is Haley LaPlante for Video Maker. We'll catch you next time. 